Hey, hey. <laughs> Something is in my throat. Okay. Hey, 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 and welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley here, and if you are new, hey, girl, hey. So today in this video, I am going to be upgrading this storage cube organizer that I got from Target. So it's a really like cute, just a little basic white organizer that I got from there. And I think it was like $27. And um, I think I got it when it was on sale. And I put it all together and everything, so it's really easy to put these things together, uh, you know, read the instructions, got it good. So I want to kind of upgrade it a little bit, and to do that, I think I'm gonna add popular board to it. So this is what it looks like now. Um, it's just, you know, plain, you can see the screws. They did have the little nail, like caps that you can put on there but I mean I honestly it still would have looked plain so I knew that I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit so that's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do so first I was just gonna keep this up here and then do everything in the garage but I'm honestly gonna take the storage cube thing down with me because I'm not gonna be coming up and down the stairs so the first thing that I'm gonna do of course is start to get the measurements and then I'm gonna start to cut so uh, let's get started Wanna give you up? I know we've been through way too much, but I'm confident we'll make it through. I'm here for you, you're not by yourself. Okay, so now we're gonna get started, and these are the boards I was talking about. So they're the poplar boards, they're a fourth of an inch thick, and I just love to use these now with projects. They're four foot pieces, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to place them on this storage cube organizer and I am going to mark off where I need to cut on my miter saw. So I'm going to be doing basic cross cuts for these pieces once I get them marked where I want them to be cut. So after I did my cuts for my top pieces, I then started to work on the sides. So I'm just going to be placing the boards up on the side and then I'm gonna mark a little bit above because I know that the next thing I'm gonna do is make beveled cuts. So to do these bevel cuts, I'm just going to be taking my miter saw and placing it at a 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna be doing the top, not the base, of my um, miter saw because if you do the base, you're gonna come out with a miter cut instead of a beveled cut. And this is what a bevel cut looks like. So after I did the first cut, I just started to get into a groove and I would just mark my piece, take it to my miter saw and cut the piece that I need. And I did this until of course I was done cutting all of my pieces. So after that, the easy way to make sure your pieces are flush is literally I tape these pieces to the side and then I took that top piece that's going to be on the top and I put it horizontally and then I took my pen and I just drew the angle that I needed and then I took that piece to my miter saw and cut that angle out. So I have cut the wood, um, I got the bevel cuts done. So now I have to like countersink these screws because I need them to be flush the MDF because it's kind of interfering with the wood and it, the wood isn't flush to the piece so I don't wanna cut any more and then like undercut or overcut. So I'm gonna do that. Um, but right now I've just like taped the woods to the sides so that I can get a feel of how everything is coming together. And right now it's looking pretty good. I didn't do the bottom and I was like, I should have done the bottom, but I think it's gonna be fine because it's gonna be on the floor. So let me go ahead and just start doing the countersink so I can start cutting and getting the precise cuts so I can put this whole thing together. So before I started to countersink these screws, the first thing I needed to do was make sure that my top was flush because as you can see, when I first put this together, I really didn't care and I kind of like just screwed these in. So I'm gonna take the screws out and then I'm gonna pull the top up just a little bit and then I'm gonna screw the screws right back in uh, when I get it as flush as I can. So I left this clip in because I wanted to show you guys how silly I am. I was literally laughing at myself. So <laughs> I was drilling new holes, which that is the worst thing to do when you are dealing with, this is straight particle board, which is the worst. Um, and if it's not the pre-drill holes that are already there, you can literally split your um, piece really easily. 
and all I had to do was just, you know, create the counter sink with my bit and just drill in the original hole. Uh, but I was not thinking and I did not do that. So don't do that when you're doing your piece. So I like to use the counter sink drill bits because it just makes it easier to create the holes that you need. Um, and I got mine from Harbor Freight and literally it was like a pack of like six or something like that for only like $6.99. So it was fairly inexpensive, especially if you shop at Harbor Freight. So I started to just uh, get into the groove of creating my holes and then um, putting the screws back in. And then after I got all of my screws in, the next thing I needed to do was of course putty this up. So I'm gonna be using my putty and I just started to putty the holes. So the main thing I wanted to do first when I was filling the holes with this putty was making sure that I filled them in, like just fill them in first. Then I let that putty dry. So after that first batch of putty dried, I sanded it smooth a little bit, and then I came back with another little bit of putty, put it on top, smoothed it out, and then after that, of course, I sanded that off. And then I had a nice, even, flush finish. So after I got my holes puttied up, I was able to then get the precise cuts that I needed to flush all of my wood pieces together. And again, I'm just using my tape to help uh, me out a little bit. There are my extra hands. And once I got this uh, correct all the way around, it was time to add these to the little storage cube. So before I added them, I just sanded them down a little bit. I'm just using a 220 grit and I'm just smoothing out certain areas. And then after that, I'm going to be using my liquid nails. So you can use liquid nails or you can use wood glue to attach these to your piece. So this is one of the easy parts once you get the cuts done. Literally just adding the liquid nails, wood glue, what, whichever one you use, smoothing it out, then just adding it to your piece. You can also use little clamps to help you um, keep your wood piece in place. And then I'm just going to take some 3 4 inch brad nails and I'm gonna start to attach this to my piece. So if you're using a nail gun, you just wanna make sure that you're nailing in the areas where the particle board attaches to each other. Um, it's just easier and you honestly don't need that many nails when you are nailing this together. If you don't use a nail gun, you don't have to worry about this. You could just keep your clamps in place and let the wood dry. So again, I just got into a groove, just started to add my liquid nails on there, smooth it out, put all of these pieces on there and then nail them into place. So for the bottom, like I said, I did not do the um, beveled cuts for that. I just literally did cross cuts and I added it to the bottom, which was completely fine because again, as I said, it's gonna be on the floor. But even if it wasn't on the floor, it would have still looked good because it, honestly, it has like that, the waterfall effect, like the counters that you can get with a little drop off. So it was just like that. So anyways, after I did the bottom, I just started to, of course, fill in my nail holes. All right, so after I got all of my nail holes filled in, the next thing I did was I started to caulk this. So you just wanna make sure that you cut that tip at an angle and then you can begin to caulk. And all you do is literally just slide it down the um, areas that need to be caulked and then you take some water and you just like put a little bit on your finger and smooth it down. And it's just really, really nice way to like just give your pieces a nice finish and to make sure everything is, like there's no gaps or anything like that between the areas where you attached the wood. So after the caulk and the putty was dry, I just took my orbital sander and I started to sand everything smooth to get it ready for painting. So the paint color that I chose was Sharon Williams White Cottage and it is the exact same color that I actually painted her bed. And so I just painted this and I did, I'm pretty sure I did like just three coats. And the good thing about this is that the white literally matched like really well the white of the actual storage cube organizer anyway. So I didn't have to worry about painting the inside. I just painted the outside. And for the front area, I just took a little flat paintbrush and I painted those areas. 
Okay, so I am done painting. I did about three coats and then I let this sit overnight. And then I went over it with a 400 grit just a few minutes ago. And that's gonna just give me a nice smooth finish and it's just gonna feel really, really smooth. So now I'm gonna take this nice placemat that I found from Hobby Lobby. Um, it was 40% off, so I think it was like, um, two dollars and something I don't know but I got four of them and they're so pretty and they're like this champagne gold color and they match perfectly with Riley's room because she has like these wire words that are the same um, color and so instead of using that little plastic um, or not it's not even plastic it's like a cardboard backing that they give you to put on the back I'm going to put this on the back instead and it's gonna look so good so I can't wait to get started with putting this on so let's go so to cut the place mats out I'm just gonna be using my self healing mat the little square backing part that originally came with it and my rotary cutter and I am just going to align the place mat up against the original little cardboard piece that it comes with and I'm simply going to cut that out. And I did this for all four of the placemats. So after I got all of my pieces cut out, I just started to attach this, of course, to my storage cube organizer. And I'm gonna be using my staple gun to do that. So I just place the little square in place and then I stapled it and then I pulled it, make sure I pulled it really, really taut and then I stapled the bottom and then I did that to the sides and I did that to all four squares. So this is fairly easy to do. Um, honestly, you can use anything, you can use fabric, you can use like these placemats, which Hobby Lobby always has some really cute placemats that you can use for backs and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend checking them out. Um, Joann's, anything like that, that has like really nice fabrics or something like that. It's just really easy to attach these to sto the storage cubes to give them just like a nice little pop. So after you attach the backing, um, and if you're using this exact same placemat, and you have some excess on the side, all you have to do is take like an X-Acto knife and just cut away what you don't need. All right, and that is all I did to this little storage cube organizer. It was very basic in the beginning and I just brought it up a couple notches. I love how this turned out. It was super easy to do. And if you don't wanna do like the bevel cuts like I did, you can definitely just do cross cuts and attach them to your storage cube organizer as well. This looks so, so good in Riley's room and it's super cute now. My favorite part is the back. Um, the backing that I added, the placemats, they look amazing. I love the color. I just love the look of these. And they were really inexpensive to get from um, Hobby Lobby. Again, you don't have to use placemats. You can use whatever type of fabric or anything else that you find. And you can just attach them to the back. There's just so many different ways that you can upgrade these storage organizers that you find. And I just love how simple it was to do this and what a big difference it made. So I hope this video inspired you to maybe upgrade yours that you have. If you do get a new one, this is something that you can do with it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below to let me know what you think. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell so you'll always be up to date with my latest tutorials and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.